Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cardiology Lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham, and today let us learn something about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. All of us would like to have big muscle bundles like this, but if your heart muscle looks like this, Houston, we got a problem. So, you really don't want to have a heart muscle which looks like uh, this bodybuilder's muscles when it comes to your heart chamber. That brings us to the topic of uh, hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a relatively common genetic cardiac abnormality occurring in 1 in 500 patients. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is characterized by dynamic left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, diastolic dysfunction, myocardial ischemia, especially in the subendocardial region. There is evidence of a mitral regurgitation. It is associated with a significant uh, ventricular arrhythmias, sudden death and shortened lifespan. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can manifest in many different forms. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, sigmoidal or uniform left ventricular hypertrophy. The other form is uh, asymmetrical septal hypertrophy. The third form is increased thickness, especially at the left ventricular apex. And a different kind, which is the neutral hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, found in 10% of the patients uh, with, with slightly increased thickness compared to the posterior wall. Symptoms of uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can present at any age and it is one of the leading causes of a sudden death among the patients who are 35 years or younger. It can also be seen in patients who are involved in competitive athletics and we will see the difference between an athletic heart compared to a patient with a genetic uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The main symptoms of uh, patients uh, with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy include uh, dyspnea on exertion, angina, and presyncope or syncope. On the physical examination, we will be we may be able to lo localize the apical impulse, which is uh, sustained. We may also feel a palpable S4 because of the prominent atrial kick, and these two combined together can give what is called a triple ripple at the left ventricular apex. You may also see prominent A waves. The carotid uh, pulse may reveal a, a rapid upstroke followed by a second upstroke which is known as the bifid spike. There is a harsh systolic ejection murmur across the entire precardium radiating to the apex and to the base of the heart. There may also be holosystolic mitral regurgitant murmur depending on the severity of the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Here is a good example of a patient's uh, pulse showing the double peak which is known as the pulses bispherians along with increased pulse pressure and here is the dichrotic notch. These outflow tract murmurs or the gradients are altered by various body positions and also following administration of uh, amyl nitrate. Let us talk about squatting. When a person squats, there is increase in venous return which leads to increase in preload and there is increase in systolic blood pressure, increase in cardiac output, decrease in heart rate and all of these will increase the end diastolic uh, volume which leads to softening of a murmur in a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Whereas in patients uh, who are standing or who are administered amyl nitrate, there is decreased venous return which leads to decrease in preload. There is uh, increase in systolic blood pressure or decrease in systolic blood pressure. Uh, there is uh, the cardiac output is decreased, the heart rate is increased in these situations which can increase the gradient across the left ventricular outflow tract in a patient with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And here is a murmur of a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy at during various uh, stages compared with a patient with aortic stenosis. This is during resting conditions in a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. 
this is upon standing where there is a decrease venous return and decrease uh, volume that leads to increased gradient which increases uh, the the murmur whereas in a patient with squatting with increased venous return and reduced heart rate and increased cardiac output the murmur becomes uh, less prominent whereas in patients with uh, aortic stenosis the murmur decreases on standing whereas it increases during squatting. So, this is how we differentiate between a murmur of aortic stenosis with that of a hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy. In a sense, anything that decreases the venous return, anything that increase, decreases the afterload, anything that increases the contractility of the left ventricle or standing valve servo or amyl nitrate or exercise and all of these situations can increase the murmur of uh, hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy. Now, let us look at some uh, laboratory tests. The electrocardiogram can show evidence of uh, left ventricular hypertrophy. As we can see here, this significantly increased voltage in the precordial leads associated with dramatic drop in the ST segment and T wave inversions. And this is probably secondary to subendocardial ischemia because of increased thickness and increased end diastolic pressure seen in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Here are some examples of echocardiographic findings in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. There is increased thickness which appears to be uniform in this particular tracing. Uh, the left ventricle is uh, almost uh, more than 2 centimeters in thickness. The normal thickness is 1 centimeter and here we have a cross section of the left ventricle which again shows uh, significant concentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle and we have a similar situation here where there is increase in interventricular septum and the posterior wall thickness. Here is an example of an apical four chamber view of a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy where there is increased septal thickness which is bulging into both right and left ventricles along with the hypertrophy of the lateral wall and, and, and a significantly dilated left atrium. And here even though the mitral valve shows a normal filling pattern, the tissue Doppler definitely shows evidence of uh, left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. In this patient, we also see significant to mitral regurgitation secondary to the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Here are pathological specimens of the patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. As you can see, there is concentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle associated with the thickening of the papillary muscles. In addition, there is also thickening of the septum on both sides and there is also some degree of a hypertrophy of the right ventricular musculature involved. Here we see a sagittal section of a heart specimen with a concentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle along with significantly diminished left ventricular cavity size. These patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are prone for significant ventricular arrhythmias, some of which can be fatal and the most common among them are ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation and they can lead to syncope and sudden death. Arrhythmias pose a significant problem in patients with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy including atrial fibrillation because in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients, the atrial kick or the contribution accounts for almost 40 percent of the cardiac output. So, with the development of atrial fibrillation, these patients' conditions deteriorate very rapidly over a short course of time. Here are different types of left ventricular hypertrophy which we can easily identify by echocardiography. Here is the asymmetric septal hypertrophy which leads to outflow tract obstruction. Here is uh, a uniform thickness of the septum which can lead to mid cavity obstruction during ventricular systole. This is an example of a apical hypertrophy and this is an example of a diffuse left ventricular hypertrophy. Here as I showed you before, we have a asymmetrical hypertrophy of the septum 
compared to the previous tracing where we saw the there was concentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle. The posterior wall thickness is much less compared to the septal thickness here and this leads to left ventricular outflow tract obstruction at the base of the heart along with the systolic anterior motion of the anterior mitral leaflets. Here we have a more or less a concentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle and the third diagram here is showing apical hypertrophy. One of the characteristic uh, findings in patients with uh, hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy is uh, an aortic pulse waveform on Doppler which has a dagger shaped appearance that is characterized by late peaking of the signal and the Doppler findings may also reveal the evidence of a significant mitral regurgitation in these uh, patients with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Another interesting finding that we find, see in patients with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the early aortic valve closure or the notch that is seen that opens again and then closes. Uh, this is very similar to the bifid carotid pulse that we palpate. Here is the effect of a uh, valve salva in a patient uh, pulse wave Doppler. He is at the resting condition. At the valve salva there is a very minimal increase whatsoever, but with amyl nitrate the velocity significantly increases. Here is an example of a pulse wave across the mitral valve showing a significant uh, A prominence which suggests diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle in a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. One more interesting finding that we see especially in the cardiac catheterization lab is following a premature ventricular beat. Because of the increased diastolic filling period, there is increased contractility of the ventricle which produces a significantly increased gradient in that particular beat. This is known as the Brockenberg response, an important finding to keep in mind. Let us talk about the differences between hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and an athlete's heart. Uh, both have hypertrophy of their left ventricles, whereas in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it can be asymmetric, it could be apical or septal, whereas in athletes, the hypertrophy is more concentric. The wall thickness is generally greater than 15 millimeters in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, whereas in athletes it is generally less than 15 millimeters. The left atrium is uh, enlarged in patients with uh, hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy because of uh, diastolic uh, dysfunction. In athletes, the left atrial size is generally normal. The left ventricular end diastolic dimension is uh, less than 45 millimeters in patients with uh, hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy, whereas in athletes it is generally greater than 45 millimeters. As I mentioned earlier, the diastolic uh, function is abnormal in patients with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, whereas in athletes the diastolic function is usually normal. The main medical Options available for treatment of uh, patients with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy include beta blockers such as uh, propranolol or metoprolol or calcium channel blockers such as verapamil or disoperamide. Beta blockers by decreasing the heart rate, by decreasing the contractility, by decreasing the myocardial oxygen requirement, they reduce the obstruction and thus help with some of the symptoms. Similarly, calcium channel blockers such as verapamil can also reduce the myocardial contractility, reduce the myocardial oxygen requirement and decrease the heart rate, all of which help reduce the outflow tract obstruction. Similarly, disoperamide also being a negative inotropic agent helps to certain degree. Some of the causes of a sudden death in patients with a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy include ventricular arrhythmias or abnormal blood pressure response to exercise or it could be familial in nature. Because of the seriousness of the problem in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, especially arrhythmias and sudden death 
all the first relatives of a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy should undergo complete cardiovascular evaluation including echocardiography and genetic counseling. They should avoid competitive athletic uh, sports and they should also take antibiotic uh, prophylaxis before medical or dental procedures. Uh, a 24 or 48 hour halter may reveal some arrhythmias uh, that may not be relevant on a routine electrocardiogram. The main interventional procedures that are available for reducing the gradient across the left ventricular outflow tract include surgery such as uh, myotomy or myomectomy, uh, placement of a uh, uh, dual chamber pacemaker or alcohol injection involving the septal branch of the left anterior descending coronary artery. And some of these patients who manifest with symptoms of sudden death or serious uh, ventricular arrhythmias may benefit from placement of a uh, cardiac device. Here is an example of uh, a defibrillator placed in a patient with a previous history of sudden death or who has a high risk of sudden death because of a family history and significant outflow track gradient. A dual chamber pacemaker has been found to be useful in reducing the left ventricular outflow track gradient because of the way in which the ventricle is activated from the apex to the base instead of from the base to the, the apex. The atrial wire is also needed to maintain the atrial contractility since 40% of the cardiac output is uh, dependent on the atrial contribution. By pacing the ventricle from the apex to the base, the outflow track gradient is reduced. Here is an hemodynamic evidence of a significant gradient before the placement of a dual chamber pacemaker and two months later there is a reduction in the gradient and almost a year later there is a dramatic decrease in the gradient uh, by a tune of 60 to 70 millimeters of mercury. So a dual chamber pacemaker can be quite useful in patients with a significant uh, outflow track obstruction. Let's talk about septal myotomy or myomectomy. If there is increased thickness of the septum compared to the, the posterior wall causing an outflow tract obstruction and these patients can undergo septal myomectomy or removal of part of the septum by surgical technique. When this is performed in patients less than 40 years of age, the mortality is 1% whereas the mortality dramatically goes up in patients who are 65 years or older. The survival is definitely better in patients who are treated surgically as compared to those who are treated medically. Surgery should be considered in patients with the resting gradients of greater than 50 millimeters of mercury who are refractory to medical treatment. Non-surgical septal reduction therapy should be considered in patients who have a heart failure of a New York Heart Association classification 3 or 4 who are already on maximum medical treatment. If they have a left ventricular outflow track gradient of 50 millimeters or greater and if their basal septal thickness is greater than 80 millimeters of mercury or if they have comorbid conditions which preclude them from surgical correction, they should be considered for alcohol injection of the septal branch. Here you can see a catheter is placed into the left anterior descending branch and advanced into the first septal branch and once the catheter is in the first septal branch a balloon is inflated so the fluid does not back up into the left anterior descending branch and through the distal ports alcohol is injected. When the alcohol is injected the segment that is supplied by this first septal branch closes off as a result of a closure of this septal branch there is a controlled myocardial infarction involving the septum and with the shrinkage and fibrosis the outflow track uh, thickness is decreased which leads to decrease in uh, ventricular outflow track obstruction. Let's talk about the natural history of uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. There is a 3% uh, mortality 
in patients with a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy which can go up to 6 to 8 percent with those with uh, significant uh, ventricular tachycardia. So, younger patients especially male with a family history of a sudden de death and syncope have a poorer prognosis and hence these patients must be very carefully evaluated and managed based on their symptoms, based on the degree of uh, gra uh, obstruction, gradient and any evidence of uh, arrhythmias. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, a brief review of uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Big bulky muscles are good when you have it on your body, but it may not be so if your heart muscle is involved in a similar type of hypertrophy. I thank you so much for watching this uh, presentation and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time. Thank you again.